This is one of my favorite things in the world. I'm crying from the onions. The onions oh, are good strong. Onions. You know what? Ooh. Just to get those out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead and dump these. This is one medium onion. I'm gonna go ahead and get those sauteing. I'll put those in a little butter. This is my cowboy beans. You might do use different. A lot of times I'll, I'll use the 15 bean blend. Right. And this is dry. Mm -hmm. So therefore, you have to put those on the stove, boil them, bring them to a boil, then let them set for an hour before you start the actual cooking process. Mm -hmm. It's a three or four hour process. I'm gonna slim your process down by going to canned beans. Now what I always look for, always, is a non-BPA liner. I'm very specific about this, that's just me. Non-BPA liner, okay? I am getting my onions going here. What I'm gonna do is I'm take some smoked sausage and I'm gonna cut those up into pieces about like this. You know what's funny is I've spent a lot of money on knives. I got this one. If you look at that knife, that's old. It is old. We got that from a lady who was selling a bunch of her stuff. She was moving. I didn't really look at it. I said, that looks like a pretty good knife. Didn't pay attention to it, five bucks. Best knife, holds the best edge. It's probably made out of an old springboard. Gosh, she only knows. A bone handles. Wasn't that her it's, dad's it's probably, favorite knife? He used it forever. It's probably over 100 years old. Yeah. So I'm gonna take these sausages up. You talk about good. Is the smell that comes off of this and the onions while they cook. I'm just gonna brown this a little bit to kind of release and open up that flavor coming off of these sausages that goes into the beans. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. And you know what? If you don't have any of these, you can put brats or hot dogs, whatever you want in here. And we open up our, our hamburger. That's right. It came from our cow. That's the best ever. Now, I would have used venison for this had we not already used our venison. Right. So we're gonna take our smoked sausage and our onions, we're gonna dump them into a bowl. Then we're gonna brown our ground beef. And I don't want it to be tiny little pieces. I'm gonna have some some chunks, chunks to eat, some yeah. small chunks. While that's going, we're gonna take our lima beans. Take about 15 ounces of those. Then we're gonna come back with our butter beans. I love butter beans. Those are good. They are good. I remember having those every Sunday. Kidney beans. Yum. And if you like some of your favorite pork and beans, they already have a seasoning in them. It's got a little bit of peppers in them already. Yum. You can come back with any kind of mixed beans that you want. There's a few pinto beans. So any kind of beans you want. Any kind of beans you want. Those are my, that's my favorite combination. We're gonna take that, and mix those all up. A third of a cup of my barbecue sauce. That's good barbecue sauce. And I'm gonna take my dry rub. That's delicious too. Over the years, I've kind of come up with my own stuff. I'm gonna mix that up a little bit. Brown sugar, about a third of a cup. A little bit of salt, we don't need much. And just a little bit, just another boost of black pepper, not much. Probably a tablespoon and a half of mustard. It already smells delicious. Yes, it does. There's just a little bit of grease. That makes you it good. What? That makes it good. Just a little bit won't hurt you. Yeah. You want this mixed? Up. Dump it in the crock pot. And I would say four, four and a half, five hours. Man, you are good to go. Wait till you see it bubbling. Oh, all that goodness. Go ahead. You want to dump it? Yep. Good. I'm, I'm gonna cook this on high. If you're, if you're around, watch it, look it, stir it. You're gonna see that it goes fairly quickly. And those juices come up on it. Oh, Yum. I'm man, looking forward to it. Delicious. First thing we're gonna do, we just took some ham, leftover ham, cubed it. We're just gonna brown that a little bit. Yeah, gotta have a little ham in your mac and cheese. Now this is the grandbabies. One of their favorite recipes. In fact, we got in a book as Taryn and Natalie's favorite. It's a book one. This is really, really, really delicious. We're just gonna brown that a little bit, release some of that flavor. Yeah. What's the next step? Is that's brown, and then we actually need to melt us a stick of butter also. Okay. So we can actually throw that in if you'd like. A little melt. Yeah. I've already cooked noodles. What I did was I took macaroni noodles. You could probably use whatever you want, but I took a cup and a half of uncooked, which gives you three, that ends up doubling itself. Mm -hmm. So we got three cups. And those are already cooked, pre-cooked. Just kind of mix those up a little bit. Makes it a little easier. I see you used your uh, Thai food container. I do like that, <laughs> yeah. It's perfect, perfect for containers. We're gonna put a whole pack of cream cheese in here. I got no problem with that. I know. All right, my ham was pretty much sufficiently browned a while back. Mm -hmm. So we got our butter in here, but I'm gonna put I'm gonna go ahead, you can, you know, this has gotten soft, but I think we need to melt it down a little bit. And just chop that up. And while you're doing that, we also have a whole pack of Colby Jack Yum. shredded. And we don't need to worry about melting that down. We're gonna pour that in with the macaroni. 
a whole bag. This is lots of cheese. I've already sprayed this pan, so it's ready. Okay. So it won't stick. That's actually looking pretty good. Okay. We're gonna take that and we're gonna dump it in with the noodles and the cheese and we're gonna stir that all up together. Just to get it, your ham's gonna have some, but just to have a little smoke flavor. Just yeah. a little hickory smoke flavor in there. Just a drop or five or twelve. Mm -hmm. Or thirteen. A little salt. Don't need too much. A little garlic. And now we're gonna add half a cup of milk. How's that look? Looks, Looks good already, delicious. doesn't it? All right. Now I'm gonna dump this into this pan and we're gonna top it with Mozzarella. A whole pack of mozzarella also. All right. See how this is this size dish, it kind of fits in there perfect what we did. And right, we're gonna push all this macaroni down. And if you want to grab me that mozzarella, because okay. we need more cheese. We do need more cheese. And this will give it a nice when we cook this, we're gonna cook it at 350 for 45 minutes, and this will make a nice brown crusty top. That's the it. great thing I like about this. When this is done, it's brown on the top, yeah. and you can cut you out a big section, and the bottom of it. It's, it's almost like the inside is so lush and cheesy, but there's like a crust, Crispy. almost a crust around it. It's absolutely, it's probably, probably the best macaroni and cheese you'll ever have. Good job, girls. And you, is this got in enough cheese? Oven. Enough cheese? Yeah, perfect. All right, I'm gonna throw that in the oven, and it's gotta cook 45 minutes, and hopefully- 350 can... degrees. Yep, gotcha. we'll, we'll eat. All right, now, we render our own lard. It's delicious. You can do this too. You can do this in your kitchen. Mm -hmm. It's very simple. Take a look back at what we did here. It's so simple. Go back to, I'm not, we usually do this later in the show, but go to timformerscountrykitchen.com. If you hear us talking about anything, more than likely we've already done it on the show and you can right. go back and look at that. You can render your own lard. You don't have to have a big pot outside. You can do it over your stove if you like. You end up with lard. Today we're gonna to take a little bit of lard, which we've already melted in this pan. So we're gonna take our skillet and we're gonna get it fairly hot because we want to get a good brown. There's nothing better than a good browned pork chop. Yeah. Now these are bone in. We know where they came from. We're going to salt and pepper those profusely to the amount that suits you or the amount that you're supposed to do according to doctor's orders. Okay, while we're getting these nice and brown, I'm going to read a question from Jim Burton. Really enjoy watching your show. Can you show us more around your farm? I would like to see more day-to-day -day operations like raising your livestock for us beginners. You know, we hear all the time folks that are watching the show, and this is such a compliment, say, hey, because of your show, we latched another calf onto our, our cow, right. or we bought sheep, now we need a dog. Is that not yeah, cool? that is. The people are trying that, they're being self-sufficient. Because Jim asked for it, let's, let's do an update. Sometimes we forget to be specific. Here's what's going on on the farm right now. The lambs are getting big. Right. It's gonna be time to kind of do what we gotta do with the little boys. That's right. They got a ways to go. They got about a year before they'll be ready to take. Mm -hmm. Our calves just went in. Now, we raise our calves, a lot of people raise them to 11, 1200 pounds. Our calves were still on milk, mm -hmm. still on the best hay that we could find. They're starting to get some stuff from the field and they are healthy looking. Now again, Maybelle is a brown Swiss. She was bred, and here's a picture of her boyfriend, Big Angus, Apex was his Apex, name. Apex, that's right, Apex. That Todd brought in. And that's a prize bull. Yeah. We expect the Angus Brown Swiss mix was probably 750 to 800 pounds. He was a, he was a, the Jersey. And the reason why you can buy them so cheap, especially a male when they're younger, and we latch that onto the Brown Maybe Swiss now. as well, is they don't have that big, thick frame, but the meat on them is absolutely wonderful. Right. So he is probably gonna weigh in a little over 600 pounds. So we're gonna do some comparison between the, the Jersey and the Angus. And I'm looking very forward to that. So that's what's going around the farm right now. It's kind of quiet other than the guinea. Yeah, so kind of crazy. I think he needs a girlfriend, maybe. I think he does. I think he'll calm down once yeah, he gets he's a, girlfriend. a girlfriend. Now these pork chops, the, the key is, is to get them nice and hot and nice and brown. Now, once we get them like we like them, we're gonna set them aside. Up here close to where it's still warm. We got a little half and half here, that's what we're gonna use. Let's put a little bit in here, maybe about a quarter of a cup. So we're gonna take our whisk, and you're gonna take your cornstarch, probably about a half a tablespoon of cornstarch, half a tablespoon of flour. And you're gonna mix into that, and just add that. Oh, Yummy. and that's gonna make as long the as you got, gravy. As long as you got grease from any kind we of meat, got it. it's yum. And in real time, you saw that gravy come together. Look, Look at that. That's how good beautiful. that looks. It's perfect, it's beautiful, it's wonderful. Now we're gonna plate all this wonderful stuff up. Nikki, if you wanna grab that macaroni and cheese out of the oven. All right. Pork chops, beautiful.
beautiful. When it comes to pork chops, you have got to have your gravy. Yes, you do. So, you wanna do our gravy? Look at that gravy, it's perfect. And you saw Yum. it happen in real time. This is not a long drawn out process. This is good country gravy. Let's dip some of this. Look how good that looks. Oh, it's, it looks almost too beautiful to mess with. Look at that. Look what this oh, looks yeah. like coming out. Look at that top, nice and crispy and oh, cheesy. Oh, are you kidding me? And the ham. Now that's mm. country mm. cooking mm. right there. So just look at that. Look at that. Look at the beauty. Looks of amazing. All that. Universal. I just I can't stand. It. I've been smelling these cook all day. Wow. Isn't that delicious. Mm. That's good. I like your burger and your mm. sausage in there. That's so sweet. It's delicious. Try pork chops. Cut me a little piece here. How is it? That's pork heaven. Mm. Wow. I like it with the gravy. Wow. <laughs> Some mac and cheese. Now this is crisp on the outside, mm. tender on the inside. That's. I can see why the girls like that. Can I just say that maybe that's one of my favorite meals we had? It's so good. simple. I mean, this is nothing special. Right. Now, most people who know gravy, they know how easy it is. But there are people who tell me, oh, I mess gravy up all the time. This is a good white gravy like, yeah, you, it is. like you get at a country restaurant. Mm -hmm. The cowboy beans are just ridiculous. Amazing. Now, we're going out later. i got to clear this hill off up here. We've got trees down everywhere from the ash blight. The ash borers have come in and killed right. all the trees. We have cedar trees that have been cut down that left the tops all over the place. When you know that you got to burn some calories, and you, you want to just load up with carbs <laughs> That's and go. That's the thing to eat. And tell you what, you can't beat this right here. Those are so sweet and And it's wonderful. pretty. It looks pretty. Colors. I like the colors. I must mention that like a lot of things that we've talked about, like the lard and some grandma's pickles that we put right. in the last couple recipes, we've already done them mm -hmm. on the show. So where would you go if you wanted those recipes? I go to timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. You do not. Yes, I do. I do too. Okay. <laughs> you know, I was talking to Tim Sloan last time. Timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. Sometimes we forget as we're cooking, we don't right. add or look at the measurements. People need that. If he actually cook. does. He said he does. He, he goes, goes you go, he I go, because it. sometimes right. I forget. Once I get it just right, right. I gotta, you know, you want to make sure, because sometimes you forget. And the exact measurements I forget. So. Also, we love our Facebook friends. If you wanted to get on Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen Facebook page, it's really hard, isn't it? No. What you do you do? You go in there and you hit like. Boom. That's You're it. In. And on the conversations, we try to talk as much as we can. Sometimes we're on the road for a while, but we will get back to right. you. And you know what? That's about it. Other than eating this beautiful plate of country food. And I'm starving. It's all about good times. Good friends. And really good eats. We'll see you next week on Ooh. Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. This mac is good. Oh, I could eat all of these. Mm -hmm.